Not everybody can go and live in the jungles of Borneo or on Solomon Islands or underneath the ice. And we are privileged to take people to those places. Well, I think being here after 31 years is quite an achievement. <laughs> So my first job in television was working for Roger Grafe, a documentary filmmaker who was one of the first observational fly-on-the-wall documentarians. I learned about content and the various kinds of productions and how to pitch to difficult commissioners. And I was working with Harry Marshall, my husband, and he was a creator, a singer of songs, somebody who could tell a story, look for people and learn how to tell their stories. So together we felt we were able to start a production company and we started our journey together. On our very first production, we co-produced with another production company. It was a big show, it was a Songs of Praise, it was from Prague just after the Velvet Revolution, and we went off with Placido Domingo to create a big Songs of Praise special. It was one of our first commissions, but we had the safety net of working with another production company. And after that, we started our own shows, and we pitched an extraordinary story to the newly founded Discovery Channel, who took a huge gamble on us and gave us a million dollar production. The music budget was $26,000, which is wonderful. And we created a soundtrack that was fantastic and actually was used as the Discovery holding music on their telephone system for the next 10 years. It was that good. To be adventurous and to be courageous and to be truly creative, you have to take risks and you have to understand those risks and you have to be resilient to the results of those risks. And you also have to be very good at mitigating those risks so that you can take them. Everybody has a different risk tolerance. And unless you take people with you on that journey, you're going to fail because people have to be, feel comfortable in their uncomfortableness. They have to feel that they are being supported to do the dangerous or exciting things that they want to do. I don't mean physically dangerous, but you know, telling stories in a different way, going to different places, working with different people. You have to be collaborative and you have to be compassionate to other people's tolerance of risk. And that way, with consensus, you can go forward. I wish I could say how many countries we've been to since we started Icon Films, but I actually don't know. And it changes sometimes every month, every year, but I would say over 60. And we've been back to countries on multiple occasions. We made a lot of films in India, which is where Harry was born. And we have gone back to it over and over again. And that's been a big part of Icon Films' life. We've also made a lot of films in the Amazon. And that's a place that we've returned to for multiple films, whether it's been as a River Monsters or a Primal or a Natural History. I think you do make mistakes. I think that it, if you didn't make mistakes, you'd be fooling yourself. I think if you haven't recognised your mistakes, you have probably made a very big mistake. You have to acknowledge that you could have think, done things better or differently. I can't remember what happened, but we were once, we were filming I think, with Jana Lumley. It was on film and it was meant to be automatically synced and it didn't automatically sync. And it was sort of my fault and sort of the cameraman's fault. And some poor man then had to sync up 40 hours of footage by hand, lip syncing. You learn never, ever assume anything. When you go back and you look at your mistakes, to go back to that point, you learned that it was based on an assumption. Nothing comes easy. Nothing comes just from a eureka moment. Everything comes from building contacts, from building stories, learning how to pitch a story, learning to hold on to a story, learning to get access. It's all about tenacity. You have to hold on to what you believe in. What's really out there? Look, look behind things, look around things, find the bigger picture. That's when the magic happens. You know, when I look at the past, it's like going through time travel. We have been sitting around a fire, looking at flames, looking at stories within the flames. 
in caves since human beings came on this earth. And I believe that's going to continue always. There are always going to be storytellers and they will always be using images to tell stories. The platform is going to change, the technology is going to change, but as long as we keep seeking out stories and find crafting stories and, and finding people who can film and people who can write and people who can colour and people who can develop ideas, our job is to find people who are talented to do all the jobs that allow us to keep telling stories.